I mean, a, a year ago, um, we thought logistics was the best sector in terms of, you know, it attracted not enough capital given what sort of income return you could achieve, and that has really changed over the last 12 months to the complete opposite. We now think logistics is actually the most overpriced sector, um, with some exceptions kind of on the fringe of Europe, but kind of UK, Germany, France, the pricing is um, <laughs> as keen as it's never been before. Um, it seems to be still in the retail sector, if you go slightly outside, um, kind of not central city shops, but sort of retail warehousing, some types of shopping centers where there's still a bit of value, especially in markets where there's um, relatively limited supply. Um, it's usually on a regional level, you can't look at it in a country level, um, usually supply um, restrictions are imposed on, on a city level, so you really have to do your research on, on a city or regional level. And in terms of regional choices, I think we have, we see quite a polarization between cities currently. So strong cities are growing ever stronger and weaker cities are actually losing population. Um, the strongest city to spot is very easy. It's always the same ones, it's the Stockholm, the Munich, the London, which are outperform everyone else. I think the more interesting ones are sort of very successful second tier cities. Um, so places like Bilbao in, in Spain or Bologna in Italy or Stuttgart in Germany or Toulouse in France are kind of sometimes outside the radar of real estate investors and they, they're not going to shoot the lights out like, like a London or a Stockholm does. But um, if you look closer, there's very interesting opportunities there and they're clearly outperforming their peers in terms of most other second tier cities which are actually left behind in many countries. Um, because I think logistics has had a very good run, and when anything has a good run, you think, well, how much further can this go? So that maybe is, a, uh, to your point, Richard, I think it's, it, it's, it's um, benefited because it's had a high yield, it, it's had structural forces behind it, the, the, the whole shift from retail to logistics, um, and, and investor appetite, and that's pushed the, 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 the yields down and pricing up. Um, but I think that's uh, a quite a nice example of uh, risks to some of the niche sectors like the student housing or like the Bill Bowers, the, these smaller sectors where um, they, they're very appealing because there's a huge fundamental demand, as, as you explained, in terms of student demand and uh, economic growth in Bilbao, um, and the yields tend to be higher. Um, but then what tends to happen is capital pours in, and as they're quite small, they get ahead of themselves, like logistics has done in the past. Logistics is one of the more volatile sectors because of that. So I think there's always a, a risk for these niche sectors, particularly at this point of the cycle when people are searching for yield and searching to deploy capital. So that is, there is clearly potential in some of these markets, but there are risks as well. I think, I think the other, the, the sectors, offices is it very interesting and it's very much more late stage cycle. So maybe there's, there's more opportunity in, in offices and retail. Retail is also interesting because it's so fragmented. Your high street versus shopping centers versus um, uh, uh, various uh, forms of big box uh, types are, are performing very differently in different countries. Um, so in the UK, one of the best performing sectors is, is Southeast retail whereas the worst performing is supermarkets. Um, and in, in Germany, I think it's, it's high street retail that's doing very well, and, and retail in the second tier cities is doing very poorly. So maybe there's more opportunity in a more fragmented sector like retail to identify that value that everyone's been talking about. 